looking at our first example for today, we've got a two litre carton of milk that's in the shape of a cube. We want to know what would be the dimensions of this box rounded to the nearest centimetre. So the first thing that I need to know is what's the volume of a cube. So I know a cube has all the same length, width and height. So my volume would be the length times the width times the height, giving me x cubed in this particular case. Um, I also know that I'm looking at a 2 litre carton of milk, but I know that a 1 litre carton is equal to 1000 centimetres cubed. And it's important to make that conversion because we are looking for the dimensions uh, closest to the nearest centimetre. So I know the, the number that gives the, the number that when cubed gives me 1000 is 10. And I know that because 10 to the power of 3, I'm going to use the little hat button that's on top of that division, a little exponent button, and I'm going to type in a 3, 10 to the power of 3, or 10 times 10 times 10, gives me 1000. Um, now the question wasn't asking me about 1000 centimetres cubed or 1 litre, it was asking me about 2000, so I'm just going to play around with a couple of numbers. I've already done these before, so it's not too much playing, but you guys maybe want to try with a couple more. Um, I'm going to start off with 12, so 12 to the power of 3, that gives me, so that would be a length, a width, and a height, all of 12. That gives me 1,728. So not quite there, but we are actually on the right track. Uh, the next number I'm going to try is 13. So 13 to the power of 3. Now that one gives me 2,197, even a little bit closer. So I'm definitely looking at a number that's somewhere in between 12 and 13. So how do I find what that number is? Well, I'm going to go to my math menu. So again, the math menu just below the alpha key. I'm going to hit in there, and the first uh, section that comes up is a lot of these kind of calculation templates that I was talking about before. So you can see there the cubed root, that's actually under that number four, um, but I'm going to go one further and look at the number five, because this is the one that you would use if you wanted any root. So whether it's a fourth root, or a fifth root, or a hundred root, something you could use that number five template there. I'm going to hit enter on number five, um, and then in my screen I can type in three to um, identify that that's the cubed root. And then I'm trying to find what number, when cubed, gives me 2,000. So I'm putting the 2,000 uh, inside the root, hitting enter, and I get 12.599. Now, my question wanted me to round that. So rounding, you can also do via the math menu. So if we go into the math menu, I'm going to go one, instead of staying in the math section, now I'm going to go across to the number. So I'm going to use the navigation keys to scroll across to the right one. And then I'm going to go down to where it says round. Now, one of the things I love um, using most on the 84 is using the answer function. And that takes the answer from the row above and I don't have to retype it. So if I use second and the negative sign, that gives me the answer that I just found. And then I'm going to use the comma, and I'm actually going to, we're going to start off, you know the question asked to round to the nearest centimetre, but I'm going to actually round to the nearest millimetre first, um, and then we'll do the centimetre next. So if I'm rounding to the nearest millimetre, I want to find the first decimal point. So I'm rounding to one decimal place, hit enter, and I get 12.6. Now the question wanted me to round to the nearest whole number, so in this case, I'm going to go back and I'm going to find that rounding function again. So back into math number, down to the second one for rounding. Um, but in this case, instead of using the answer, I'm going to scroll up a couple and I'm going to highlight the answer that I got before. I'm going to press enter to bring that down and then I'm rounding to the nearest whole number so that's to zero decimal places. So there's my number there, 13. Last thing I just wanted to highlight with this example is the fact that we can actually find that uh, nth root t template um, in another location on the calculator as well. So if I use what we call the quick keys function, which is pressing alpha and then using any of those graphing keys at the top there. So uh, the math kind of the shortcut math menu is under window or F2. So if I go alpha and then F2, that brings up my kind of mini math menu. Um, and I can see that the nth root is that number six there. So if I press number six, that would bring in that template as well. My second example is another volume uh, situation. So in this case, we're looking at a spherical balloon that has a radius of 40 centimetres. And our person who's swelling up the balloon can exhale four litres of air with each, with each breath. So how many breaths will he need to inflate the balloon? So the first thing we want to do is find the volume. So again, I know my volume of a balloon or any kind of sphere uh, is four thirds uh, pi r cubed. Um, and again, I know my radius in this case is 40 centimetres. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm going to input that uh, equation but with my radius substituted in. So to get that fraction, that 4 thirds, again we go alpha and then the key directly next to it uh, on the right, so that X button there, and I'm going to type in 4 thirds times by pi second and the exponent key gives me pi and then times by 40 to the power of 3 using that exponent key again. Pressing enter and that gives me 268,082 centimeters cubed. So pretty big balloon. Uh, to convert that into liters, I'm going to divide it by a thousand. Um, and again, another really nice thing here is you don't actually have to, um, if, you, if you just automatically press any kind of operation key, it does that to the answer on the roll above. So if I just press the division sign, that answer comes up straight away. So I'm going to divide that by a thousand. So that gives me 268 litres. Um, and then our friend John, who was blowing up the balloon, he could blow up at a rate of 4 litres per breath. So if I divide that answer again by 4, that means it's going to take him 67 breaths to blow up that balloon. Okay, last two examples we're going to look at. The first one is 10 to the power of what is equal to 500. And I've labelled these A and B because they are pretty intrinsically linked. Okay, so we know that 10 to the power of 2 gives us 100, and we know that 10 to the power of 3 gives us 1,000. So 10 to the power of something equaling to 500 must be somewhere in between 2 and 3. Uh, but we can find what that number is exactly by using this log key. So if we take a log of 500, now the standard log uses a base of 10. So that means that the number that you're looking for, the base of your power, um, is a 10. So that's already in there for us. And we'll look at the exa next example as one where there isn't a base of 10. Um, but if I hit enter on that, my answer gives me 2.69897, uh, etc. Now if I wanted to double check that this answer is right, I could do 10 to the power of, now again I could use that answer key um, from before, so second, the negative sign, put the answer in, or I could highlight and bring that and copy that answer down. Um, but if I press enter on here, I end up with 500 as my result, so I can see that that's perfect. My last question, what is the value of x if 2 to the power of x equals 100? Okay, so now in this particular case, 2 to the power of x equals to 100, my base is now not 10, it's another number instead. So I need to use a different template rather than just that standard log one there. So I can access um, my other template by using my math quick keys. So if I go alpha and then uh, press the window button, I can see here number 5 gives me the log base where I can change what that base number is. So if I go to number 5, um, I can bring that in, I can edit that to add in a 2, and in this case I'm finding what 2 to the power of what gives me 100, so that 100 goes in the brackets there, enter, and that gives me 6.64. Um, now again, I could uh, check to see how good my answer is here and raise that 2 to the power of 6.64. This time I'm going to copy that and bring it down, press enter, and that gives me 100. Um, I could also access that other template again using the math menu, um, but it's right at the bottom of the math menu, so I do have to do quite a bit of scrolling to get all the way down there, and that's why it's easier to find it. Uh, sorry, it's that one there, that A, uh, if I just go one up. Um, so that's why it's easier to access that one via the quick keys function. The last thing I did want to mention just really, really briefly before our video finishes is where you can find E and I uh, on your calculator. And again, these things aren't things that you're probably going to look at um, in uh, middle school or even, even if you don't necessarily access those kind of higher levels of math in senior school. Um, so we can find E by doing second and the division sign and we can find um, Euler's number there. Uh, and then we can find I by doing second and the decimal point. So there's another couple of buttons that you might need at some stage. Alrighty, uh, it's been great having you guys here today and I'll see you next time.